Eric Dolph covering my. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And this evening, I want to share with you some very powerful insights that I believe definitely are signs that, as a Jewish people, we should have seen long ago. Signs that point to us who the Mashiach would actually be. We're going to be looking tonight from when God speaks to Moses at the burning bush, as well as Joshua, Job, and a few others even in Hosea and, of course, uh, Solomon's Song of Songs. I think it's going to be interesting, something to share with you, especially if you are a Jewish believer. If you, uh, when I say a believer, just a believer in the, uh, the Torah, the Tanakh, the believer of the prophets and the, uh, the writings, the Kotavim, the Navim, the prophets, and, of course, the Torah, uh, the Law of Moses, the, book, the five books of Moses. If you believe these things, or even if you are a believer uh, as a, a believer of Jesus, or you could be a Muslim. It doesn't matter to me what way you might believe, uh, Hindu, whatever the case may be. I want to show you and share with you an incredible insight that's been laying uh, in the Jewish Bible. Uh, the Old Testament, it is called by the Christian people, uh, something that's been laying in there all this time, a clear identity to who the Mashiach would be. Now Moses was keeping the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the father's end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God unto Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of, a midst, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside now and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for, thy, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now, for the sake of my Jewish brothers, I am going to read a little bit of this in Hebrew. So for those of you that do not speak Hebrew, just please bear with me. Uh, and, and it's mainly for the purpose of dealing with certain issues. And I want to begin right here in verse 2. V'yore melech Yehuah Eliyah belibat eish mitok hasine. V'yore hine hasine be'erba eish ve'hisine ineinu ochel. ויאמר משה אסרה נא ויראה את הם המורה הגדול הזה מדוע לא יבאר הסיני ויורד יהוה כי סר לרות ויקרא אליהו אלוהים מתוך הסיני ויאמר משה משה ויאמר הנני ויאמר אל תקרא חלום שר נא לך מאר רגליך כי המקום אשר אתה עומד עליו אדמת קודש הוא. ויאמר אנוכי אלוהי אביך אלוהי אברהם אלוהי יקסק ואלוהי יעקב ויסתר משה פניו כי יורה מהביט now, the important part that we're going to look at here, friends, is sitting right here in verse 2. As we read to start with, And the angel of the Lord, the Yore Melech HaYuhua Aliyav, appeared unto him in a flame of fire. And there's a lot of confusion as to who is it then that actually meets Moses. Because here we have a thorn bush, by the way, uh, Sinai, or Sinai, as uh, we think of the Sinai Desert in English, uh, it's the same thing. It gets its name from the word of the bush itself that, that the angel of the Lord, or that the, that the Lord spoke from in the midst of the bush there. That is the word for thorn bush, Hasine, a thorn bush. And from the Matok Hasine, out of the midst of the uh, thorn bush or out of the midst of the flame, we find that God himself begins to speak to Moses. 
Now, the flame itself, the fire, the H, this is the actual, the angel of the Lord that is in the midst of the bush. The angel of the Lord, when we use the terminology in Hebrew to express, express the word, the, 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 uh, the, the angel of the Lord here, this is the fire itself. This is the, pre, the, the, the form in which God himself has taken upon himself in order for Moses to have something to see. And it's a, it's, a, it's a fire that does not consume. It does not ochel, as it is written in Hebrew. It does not ochel the bush. It does not consume the bush. And yet, a voice speaks out from the midst of that flame. And that voice is the voice of God. The voice of Yahuwah is speaking directly to Moses from the midst of the bush. But what is important, it is not as important to, to, to try to, to, to understand you know, the angel of the Lord, the fire, God speaking from the middle of the bush, as it is to know that God himself was in the midst of a thorn bush. The midst of a thorn bush. Why? Because it is a sign to the Jewish people that God himself comes in the midst of a thorn bush to speak to the children of Israel. In this case, he was speaking to Moses. Now, I find it interesting because I want to share something else with you. Let's take and let's, let's jump over here to Joshua chapter 23. And I'm going to share with you an interesting prophecy that Joshua makes as well. Keeping in mind that God meets Moses, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And where does he meet him? He meets Moses on the backside of the desert, the angel of the Lord, the fire itself, and God is speaking from the midst of that thorn bush out of the fire. The Aish. Think about Adam as well. Remember when I taught you just the other day, we saw about what Adam and Eve were before the fall. They were Ish and Isha. The Aish, as I said, the fire of God. And then you take from both their names, she's Isha, he's Aish, and Yod in the middle of Ish, and the He at the end of uh, Isha. Then you have yod Hey, you have God again in the midst of Adam and Eve. And it was what? A fire. But it wasn't a fire that consumed their flesh. But as long as they were in the divine will of God, the God was with them and in them. The fire of God that would not consume them. And the same thing is when Moses meets the angel, meets the Lord here on the backside of the desert, desert it is the angel of the Lord there, the fire, and God is in the middle of it. Speaking to Moses, right? Now, here's where it gets interesting. Joshua, therefore, be very courageous to keep to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses that you turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. That you come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor worship them. Now, interesting, Joshua is telling them to keep in mind the things that God gave Moses. Why? Because Moses met God on the backside of the desert in the midst of what? A thorn bush. But cleave unto the Lord your God as you have done unto this day. Wherefore the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and mighty. But as for you, no man hath stood against you unto this day. One man of you hath chased a thousand. For the Lord your God, he is that that fought for you as, as spoke unto you. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that you love the Lord your God. Else, if you do any wise, go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and make marriages with them, and go in unto them, and they to you know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive these nations from out of your sight. But they shall be a snare and a trap unto you and scourge in your sides and pricks in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which, you're, which the Lord your God hath given you. Now, Joshua shows you that if you go to making covenants with these other nations, as the Maccabee brothers did with Rome, that they would become a scourge in your side and pricks or thorns in your eyes. He gave you a sign. 
of what would happen. You just didn't realize it was a sign of the Mashiach, did you? You know, the rabbis know, according to Daniel's prophecy, that the Mashiach would be cut off, not for himself, but for the people. According to the prophecy of Daniel's 70 weeks in chapter 9. And there's a sign given to you right here by Joshua. That they'll be scourging your sides and pricks in your eyes or thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land. In Job, we write, read here, Among the bushes they bray, under the needles they are gathered together. They are children of cur uh, curls, yea, children of uh, ignoble men. They were scourged out of the land, and now I, be I became their song, yea, I am a byword unto them. They abhor me, they flee far from me, and spare not to spit in my face. Where did they gather? Among the bush they bray, under the needles. They're gathered together, like being under a thorn bush. But in this case, they're making fun of him, even to spitting in his face. You know, when we talk about this, I cannot help but see that God was in the midst of the thorn bush, in tabernacled in a human being, in a man the only begotten Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. And yet, this is not the only prophecies that we can look at to see. There's others. Let's look at John, though, real quick. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him. With their hands. You know, it's interesting because Solomon writes like this here I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. As a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. He was the lily among the thorns, and he was among the daughters of Israel. How could we miss him? How did we miss him? Is my question. Hosea writes here, And I will not have compassion upon her children, for they are children of harlotry. For their mother hath played the harlot, she hath conceived them, hath uh, done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. Yeah, Rome. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns, and I will make a wall against her that she shall not find her paths. And she shall run after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then she shall say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. Your way, Israel, was hedged up with thorns. He is the lily among the thorns, among the daughters of Israel. He was the one that spoke from the midst of the bush when he spoke to Moses. And when he was on the cross, he spoke in an unknown tongue. Lama, lama, sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It was God in the midst of the thorn bush speaking to the children of Israel. And so many prophecies were laid out for us to know that the Messiah was indeed Yeshua. As Joshua pointed out clearly when he closed out and he says, Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive these nations from out from your sight, when you start making these covenants with Rome. But they shall be a snare and a trap unto you, and a scourge in your side, sides, a beating, beat his sides, and pricks or thorns in your eyes, 
until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And you mean to tell me that when we went into captivity, the house of Judah that is, we never looked for the thorns or the scourging? Remember it even says that Pilate scourged him. Did we forget about it? What have we overlooked? The Mashiach came. I'm Stephen Benin with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research.